A couple years ago, I saw this story in the news, and it was a man who was active duty, and I think he did three or four tours. And they were a year each, and every time it meant that he had to leave his family behind. And he was then to running, so one time he's back from a tour, and his son got old enough to run, and says, hey, why don't you come run with me? And so they start running together. And they're going out there every day, and they're running together, enjoying time together. It's their thing. And then when he's away on deployment, they communicate back and forth. The son would keep running, and the dad would keep running. And they communicate, like, hey, here's my times. Here's how far I ran. And it was that bond that they had. And when they're running, they're thinking of each other, and they feel connected to each other. They're remembering the times that they had together and looking forward to the runs that they're going to have together in the future. On one of the deployments, of the son decided that he was going to run a marathon. And so he started training. It was, I think it was about five months that he's training. He's getting ready for this marathon. He's working, and he's working, and he's remembering his dad and how proud his dad's going to be of him for running this marathon. And maybe they'll run a marathon together someday when his dad's home. So he gets there, and he starts the race, and he's running. And 10 miles in, he's checking his pace, and he's realizing, like, I'm doing pretty good. This is faster than I've ever run before. So he keeps going and he keeps checking his pace and keeps realizing that he's actually doing really well. He gets to mile 20, which I hear is where the wall hits you. I've never run that far. And he gets there and he's not tired. He doesn't hit a wall. And he starts thinking, I'm doing really well. I'm going to place. Like, I'm going to place in my age group. I didn't even expect. This is my first marathon, and I'm going to place in my age group. And he keeps going mile 23, mile 24. He still hasn't hit the wall. And he's going faster, and he's looking at the pace. He's like, I'm going to go as fast as I can, because maybe I won't just place in my age group. Maybe I'll place in the whole race. I'm going to get a medal. I'll be in the paper, all of these other things, the award that's going to come from what it is that he's accomplishing. He gets to the place of where he can see the finish line, and it's in sight. And all the people are gathered around at the finish line, family and friends, to cheer them on and to welcome them. As he gets closer, he begins to see a man in fatigues. He realizes his dad's there. That his dad got leave for two weeks and came as a surprise to be there for him when he crossed that finish line to welcome him into his arms. And he said he started running faster than he's ever run before. And it wasn't for the medal. It wasn't for the accolades. It wasn't for if he'd placed in his group or if he'd placed in the race. All those other things didn't mean anything to him anymore. The only thing that was important was that his dad was there. And he was running to the arms of his father who was there waiting for him. You know, we have the same thing as we're running this race we're not running. It's so tempting to think, I want these accolades. I want these awards. I want pleasure. I want control of myself. I want all of these different things that are so important to me. But when we get the glimpse of that our Father's sitting there and he's waiting for us at the end of the finish line, that he's the prize, that he's the, the reward that we receive, it doesn't matter about the time anymore. It doesn't matter what other people are going to think. It doesn't matter the career we have, the degree we get. And none of those things matter anymore because the only thing that we want is to run into the arms of our Father. Would you stand with me this morning? God, over every single one of us, God, will we have a vision of you? A vision of your love for us. A new awakening, a new revelation of it that everything else in this world would seem completely worthless, that it would just seem like garbage in comparison. And Jesus, would there be a desire stirred up inside of us to run our race for you, to run our race for the reward that is you, casting off every hindrance, casting off every weight, Jesus, because we want you Jesus, we're so grateful for healings. We're so grateful for restored marriages. We're so grateful for wisdom. We're so grateful for financial breakthrough. But Jesus, more than all of those things, we want you. And this morning, maybe there's some weight that you've been carrying in this race. Some things are going to keep you from seeing breakthrough. Some things are going to wear down your faith.
the things that are going to make it so you spend your life pursuing the wrong things and pouring all of your effort and all of your energy into stuff that's garbage in comparison. Maybe this morning you need God to come and to break some things in you. Maybe it's some sin issues in your life that you need God to break off because they're weighing you down. Maybe this morning you need to have him break off some thoughts. You know, thoughts can be heavy. The thought that you're not good enough, the thought that you've done too much, the thought that God doesn't love you, that is the worst weight you can carry. Maybe you need that broken off of you this morning so that you can receive the love of the Father for you and see him at the end of the race calling to you with arms open to step into the reward that is him, that is knowing him, that's being one with him. Maybe for some of you it's heavy sorrow on your heart that you need broken off because it's a weight that's keeping you from following after Jesus or it's anxiety or fear.